Hello guys and welcome to episode 5 of this Bristol Rovers career mode. Today I've got for you the blockbuster game that is first versus second as we travelled to league leaders Wigan Athletic earlier who as the table reads were unbeaten so far in the season on 17 points with Bristol Rovers just behind by one point on 16 uh, and then the likes of Bury and Blackburn Rovers, MK Dons, making up the rest of the pack shortly behind on 15, 15 and 14 with Shrewsbury sixth in the playoffs on 13 points. With that in mind, I knew it was going to be a tough test but I did believe we could win. And the lineup was as follows. The bat five who've been ever present so far this season, very consistent. Ben Breerton and Billy Bowden on either wing. Abu Agogo, Mamatu and Dyer's holding midfielders and Tyler Walker and Devante Cole leading the line. And on that note, I'll leave you in the capable hands of Martin Tyler to hype up this game once more. Well, it's very early in the season, but we have the top two involved today and it could have a lot of significance down the road a ways. We're moments away. Join us for the kickoff and it's live. Thank you for your thrilling words there, Martin. Now, the Wigan lineup, there was a lot of noticeable names, key players, and you could see why they were in the hunt for uh, promotion this season. The likes of Ivan Tony and Nick Powell and Sean McDonald, um, you know, Bernard right back, uh, Gary Roberts on the bench as well. He's a really good player, and I'm surprised to see him on the bench. But obviously, you know, Nick Powell's taking his position, and uh, I knew it was going to be a tough game. Early on, straight away, you could see that Wigan were going for it. Ivan Tony gets time to turn shoots and goes just wide. Ryan Sweeney's then caught out of position with the ball and that leaves Ivan Tony almost free after some poor defending from myself and he hits the bar unlucky and his rebound effort is caught by the goalkeeper. From the resulting play we lose the ball once again high up the field. Byrne gives it to Powell who feeds through Ivan Tony who finds a little bit of space and similarly his effort goes just over the bar. Jacob strolls past Ben Breerton here. He finds Ivan Tony, who lays it off nicely to Nick Powell, but his effort also goes just wide. Finally, the 19th minute provides some sort of excitement for the travelling Bristol Rovers fans. Tyler Walker finds some space. He drives into it, gets caught out in the end. Billy Bowden lays it off to Devante Colt. He finds Ben Breerton, whose effort hits the post, and Wigan are able to clear their lines just about. First first minute comes and I get frustrated that Tyler Walker loses the ball here and then chop down that Wigan play of Armour 2 and Dai, who at first I was fearing it could be a red card, but thankfully it's only a yellow and we do get away with that one. As soon as I saw that Nick Powell was taking the resulting free kick, I feared the worst, I know. He's a good set piece taker and he's good from long distance as well. The keeper's lining up his wall and I'm fearing the worst. Powell takes it and hits the bar. It's very unlucky and it should be 1-0. Half time comes and at that point I decide to make a change. I'm contemplating whether to take the strikers off but I'll give them another chance. Ben Breerton is looking tired on the right wing so Byron Moore comes on to replace him. And then the second half begins. From that moment on, it is all Bristol Rovers. Byron Moore has a lovely layoff with Tyler Walker, 1-2. His effort is saved, but Devante Cole is able to feed on the scraps of the rebound, and that makes it 1-0 in a smash and grab performance to the away team. Unfortunately, there is no replay for you to go on because I got a little bit excited uh, and was pressing A too much, unfortunately. Sixteenth minute comes and at this point I decide I want to be a little bit more cautious and stick to my away team performance. So I decide to adopt a different formation. 4-2-3-1 which we haven't seen much in this career mode. Uh, Tyler Walker is one casualty as Liam Serkham who hasn't featured at all in this career mode finally gets his chance to impress and now we'll see what he can really do. Next, Ndai finds Moore who's in acres of space due to the left back vacating his area. Moore cuts it back to Billy Bowden who's peeled away nicely from his man uh, and he makes it 2-0 with a calm finish and two of the original gang of Bristol Rovers teaming up there which is really good to see. 
and Byron Moore changed this game on its head. In the first half, we were, as you can see, we were getting dominated, uh, but really I think Byron Moore coming on really changed the game. He offered us an outlet going forward, uh, and he's been the, he was the creative spark of, of this game. Also important to note that at this point, it, as it will say in a minute, Billy Bowden only had two goals in the league, uh, which was really surprising. I thought he'd been he'd been more prolific. I thought he'd contributed more to games, so it was really strange to see. But uh, nevertheless, he's been playing really well. With Ndoye on a yellow card and us now leading 2-0 late on, I thought it's time to take him off and bring Stuart Sinclair on to try and see out the game uh, and make sure that he doesn't get a red card because he's prone to getting cards at all times. from Byron Moore and away he goes. Evans can't get anywhere near him as he crosses it in. Wigan managed to head clear but only to the path of Stuart Sinclair. Over to Agogo who lays off Billy Bowden and it's another calm finish. 3-0 and that is game over to send the away fans into absolute ruptures. That goal rounds off the game and in the end it's an emphatic 3-0 win away at the league leaders who were unbeaten before this game. I was really pleased with the victory. Obviously in the first half it was a very testing half. We had to be resolute, defend really well. Uh, we got lucky more than once to be fair. They hit the bar twice. Nick Powell's uh, free kick and Eve Tony's effort as well. He kept finding space in the middle so I need to somehow work on that. Maybe one of the... Uh, the two older midfielders need to have their instructions changed or, or something along those lines. I kept giving the ball away as well, trying to play it out from the back. Um, you know, sometimes it just needs to be uh, needs to be gotten rid of. But nevertheless, uh, it doesn't matter because uh, a three 0 resounding victory, uh, and that was really pleasing. So on to the next game against Blackpool. Straight into it, the back five always the same as are the two holding midfielders I decided to go with the team that finished that game so well so Liam Serkham finally making his first start Byron Moore and Billy Bowden starting of course and Devante Cole was leading the line in a game that I believed uh, we should be winning routinely Blackpool uh, were 16th in the table uh, as you can see here uh, and we were first having won that game against Wigan Athletic by two points so you know being at home as well I felt like this should be a, an easy win but as you'll see, it ended up being anything but an easy win. Liam Serkin finds a lot of space to drive into in the middle. He finds the run of Devante Cole. It's a nice ball, but Cole can't finish. The keeper makes a save, and that remains 0-0. This is a testament to how bad the game was, really. The keeper comes out in the second half. He doesn't have any options, so he runs out and then produces this. In the 68th minute... Turton's on the right wing, he finds space, crosses it into Viv Solomon Otterbor over at the far post and his volley is saved. It's a good save, it's a good volley as well, he's really unlucky there. And then Mamatu and Dai gets his custom rebooking for this challenge. Could have been a red there really. So at that point, I decide enough is enough and changes are to be made. Ben Brearton comes on for Byron Moore, who hasn't had a game as good uh, as his last one. Originally, I put Devante Cole out on the left wing, uh, and then I was going to put John Marquis front and go direct, but instead I decided to bring Harrison Dunk on and then swap him and Devante Cole back to their original positions uh, and try and put inject a bit of pace and directness into the game because there was just nothing on offer uh, in terms of Bristol Rovers' attacks. The original Blackpool corner leads to another corner. And then from there, ball's whipped in. Harrison Dunk can't get clear. He's shouldered off the ball and Blackpool score. But the referee disallows it for a foul on Harrison Dunk. But I disagreed. I thought that it should have stood. And then this just really epitomises the game. Liam Serkham finding space, but he's got nothing on offer. So he has to shoot and Blackpool end up clearing. 78th minute highlight and 
Jay Spearing finds Viv Solomon Otterbo. He lays it inside. And Blackpool score 1-0. Really disappointed at that point. I wasn't too pleased, as you can imagine. Uh, and it's made a bit of a smash and grab, really. Um, although there's not really been a better team. Blackpool were coming here, looking to defend and maybe, you know, catch us on the counter. And that's exactly what they did. And Viv Solomon Otterbo, uh, as you've seen once or twice in, in this game, was causing a real problem for us with his pace, um, you know, and his intelligence getting to the spaces as well. I smash all out attack on in the hope of grabbing anything from the game. Ben Breerton peels away from his man. Great pace shown. It's a great ball into the box. But Devante Cole, instead of headering it, I'm smashing B on the controller. But he chests it and it ends up going out for a corner. Keeper comes up for the corner. But there's no heroics today. He can't get onto it. No one else can. Agogo gets it on the edge, but he can't make anything of it. And Blackpool managed to clear. They defend well. And because we've committed so many men forward, obviously they're going to try and hit us on the break. Carver Cell, nice burst of pace there. He crosses the ball in, but Smith manages to get a tip onto it. And that is that really. Lee Brown clears it in an effort to try and get the ball up as quickly as possible. But there's too little, too late. No time left. And Blackpool... In the end, get a resounding 1-0 win. And fair play to them. They defended well. We just weren't good enough on the day. Uh, and, you know, we've got to learn to attack better and see those games off. After that game, our hard work in the weekend game wasn't done. As they go back to first with a win and we drop to second. But the table still looks a good reading. 19 points in second place. You know, a really pleasing start for us. So our schedule now reads for the next episode, Portsmouth away, a trip to Fratton Park, and then Plymouth at home. Uh, I have been thinking about it, and I'm wondering whether to uh, play games in between episodes so that it's not constantly repetitive, and then coming back uh, when there's you know key games here and there. Uh, but I'm going to decide that in the future. Um, for now, I'm going to do the, uh, the Portsmouth uh, and Plymouth episode, episode 6 uh, next and then we will see so on that note thank you so much for watching if you've managed to make it to the end uh, I've really been enjoying doing this so far, I've been getting a lot of um, you know positive feedback in the comments as well so I, I, mean, I really appreciate anyone who's taken the time out to do that um, if you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel please. Please like if you enjoyed it. Leave a dislike if you didn't and tell me you know, what I can do to improve. I've got other series on the channel, Wishlist Career Mode Series, uh, part one and two out as of recording this. Uh, a new league's wishlist as well. Um, you know, So be sure to check out for that. And on that note, I've been Bromo18 and I will see you next time.